Okay. Do you recall having a conversation with Hennepin County prosecutors about the significance of the toxicology findings? I recall having the conversation. I don't recall the specifics of it, but I'm certain that I would have relayed the toxicology findings to them. Do you recall describing the level of fentanyl as a fatal level of fentanyl? I recall describing it in other circumstances. It would be a fatal level, yes, in other circumstances. And you all, do you, would you agree that one of the causes of the pulmonary edema that you communicated to the county attorneys was also fentanyl? Fentanyl can certainly be a cause of pulmonary edema. Um, as I indicated earlier in previous questioning, it's confounded by the fact that Mr. Floyd had quite a bit of CPR, and so I find the pulmonary edema much less specific, um, given, given that he survived and made it to the hospital for a period of time. Do you recall telling the county attorney's office that had you found Mr. Floyd under different circumstances, um, you would have determined this to be a fentanyl overdose? So I don't recall specifically what I told the county attorney, but it almost certainly went something like this. Had Mr. Floyd been home alone in his locked residence with no evidence of trauma, and the only autopsy finding was that fentanyl level, then yes, I would certify his death as due to fentanyl toxicity. Again, interpretation of dr drug concentrations is very context dependent. You then were also interviewed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation on or about uh, July 8th of 2020? Um, I, I believe it was the Federal Bureau of Investigation and or the U.S. Attorney. Um, a lot of these took place over video calls and I wasn't entirely sure who was who at all times, but I believe it was those two groups, yes. Um, and that occurred on July 8th of 2020, correct? To the best of my recollection, yes. Right. Were you asked but for type questions? I was. And were you able to form an opinion on but for the involvement of law officers whether Mr. Floyd would have died under these circumstances? Objection, Your Honor, the state didn't mean the same. Overruled, it. this is not the legal standard, simply uh, his diagnosis. You can go forward on that basis. So I'll answer the question, Counselor. As I mentioned earlier, there were multiple people on these video calls. And at some point, there was more than one person asking questions at a time. I don't normally think of things in the but-for paradigm. Um, perhaps that's a legal thing, but it's not normally how I think as a forensic pathologist. So what I clarified for the U.S. Attorney and the Federal Bureau of Investigation was my opinion as to what happened to Mr. Floyd, and that is he experienced a cardiopulmonary arrest in the context of law enforcement's dual restraint and neck compression. It was the stress of that interaction that tipped him over the edge given his underlying heart disease and his toxicological status. That was also clarified in a letter from the Hennepin County Attorney to the U.S. Attorney, I want to say within a few days of that meeting because of the confusion around how that meeting was run and the way those questions were asked. Fair enough. Thank you. 